which is also um, located in Texas and Addison. Um, yeah, so welcome guys! Yay! <laughs> also, I love your Psyche K cosplay. Yes, it's great. I've been seeing the see view, it's been great. <laughs> but um, yeah, so happy Saturday, everybody. Um, this panel is a little bit like kind of free form. Um, it's just general like intro things you know if you're interested in um, getting started like, online voiceover and I'll also be taking a lot of questions. Um, so yeah, first things first, uh, what do you think is the most important thing for voice acting? Acting. Somebody said it, yeah, you just right off the top of your head, acting is correct. A lot of people um, think it's voices or how many characters you can do or impressions, but actually just acting. Acting is the most important thing. Um, and voiceover is just another medium for acting. So much like, you know, stage is different than film, voiceover is also just a different style of acting, but acting is the most important thing. So, uh, yeah, a um, quick little, little tidbit about me. Um, I'm 28 years old. <laughs> um, my birthday's in April. But um, I, when I was 14, 15, I was like, I want to be a voice actor because Laura Croft was not a profession. <laughs> you cannot actually go rave tunes and shoot dinosaurs, which I was very disappointed to discover as I got older. Um, but yes, yeah, so I said, I want to be a voice actor. So I sat down and Googled how to become a voice actor. And uh, I was working on it for, I've been voice acting for over over 10 years now. Um, I started really for like practicing in 2007. Um, so it's, it's been a hot second. But um, a lot of the work I had done was online, so um, a lot of people didn't like really know who I was until I started doing uh, anime, which is it's great to be here and to see you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I originally started just practicing in my closet at home and doing a bunch of online stuff, like flash animations, radio plays, um, all that good stuff. Like back, especially back when Newgrounds was still like a really, really big thing. Does anybody remember? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. That. Okay, cool. Is my age showing? I don't know. <laughs> but um, up until that point, like um, I had never taken any acting classes. I had never, you know, I had no experience like doing stage. I actually had crippling stage fright to where um, I only ever auditioned for a play once when I was up in high school, and uh, I I was just like, oh, like, my friend's going. Like my kid is just really dramatic. I was stuttering and I couldn't get anything up clearly. So um, going from that to where I'm at now, one of the things I just really want to, you know, hammer home is that if I can do this, anybody can do it. You know, like it, it doesn't matter if you don't start out having acting experience. That's something that you can work on. Like you can, you know, take classes. You can practice at home. You can practice with friends. You can join an improv group. You know. So just first things first. You can do this. Um, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard and there's a lot of rejection. It's very, very competitive, but it's like with anything in life. If you just keep pushing and you keep, you know, working at it and you don't give up, how can you fail? And failure is just enough, like failure, I don't even like the word failure because it's just um, failure and success are two sides of the same coin. Failure just means like something like you expected like, didn't happen, but it's not necessarily bad, it's a learning experience. I mean Life is all about failure and, you know, bringing success from that. So I hope, I hope that makes sense and I'm not just word dominant here. Is, is everybody, uh, did you guys, were you guys up late partying last night? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so this is a little bit of a um, backstory about me. Um, does anybody have any specific burning questions that they would like answered about getting started, about just, yeah, your hand shot right up. What's something you know now that you wish you know when you started? That's a really, really good. That's a really good question. So um, he said, um, "What is something I wish I knew now? Like that I know now that I wish I knew when I started. I can speak." Um, yeah, and I guess the main thing is that you know location is really important. For the longest time, like I stayed in Ohio, and I was like, okay, well, like I have a lot of opportunities online, but there's only so many things you can do not living in a location that, you know, breeds like a bunch of acting here. Like, which, um, the main clubs in the U.S. are, um, like, Texas, 
uh, LA and New York. And they each have like their own kind of, like, there's a lot of Broadway and like theater and like commercial out in New York, but there's some, some anime. Um, Texas is like kind of like a hub of a bunch of different stuff, and like a lot of other like, AAA video games and like really big titles are really out in LA. I'm talking about that and like, all of that kind of stuff. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what kind of microphone would you recommend? I, I am so sorry, what? What kind of mic would you recommend? Okay, that's a really good question too. So um, for getting started with a um, microphone, I guess it really depends if you're just starting out, if you've never tried voice acting before, if you want to get your feet wet. Um, for reference, my first ever microphone was a karaoke mic that I bought from Best Buy and plugged into my laptop. It sounded like shit. <laughs> but um, so like even though, even though you're doing work online, like your, your mic quality does matter. But if you're trying to just like get your feet wet and do something like more of like a hobbyist thing, um, you can or just like practice with friends. Like anything that like records audio is fine to start out. And then like, hey, I really like this. I want to keep trying this. I want to maybe like try to do like a radio play or something online or like audition for projects. You will need to upgrade your equipment and eventually create a home studio. So um, I went from that little that little, little shitty like well even before that I used like a little MP3 player to record myself on and it had batteries and I had to like manually upload like the file and it was a nightmare. Um, I think it was like before iPods were really popular, but anyway, um, so I went from that to a karaoke microphone to a horrible mistake, my built in laptop mic. <laughs> and then um, I bought um, a small, like, I got a USB mic, and I can't remember what that one was called, but what I ended up settling on until I started getting like, the more expensive equipment and the free amps and stuff, I started um, with just a Blue Yeti. Um, I recommend the Blue Yeti Pro if you're just starting out because um, the, the, the Yeti, Blue Yeti series like, um, is a USB microphone, so you can just plug it in and did you go. Um, the Blue Yeti Pro, um, you can also, you can hook it up directly as USB, or you can hook it up using uh, a preamp with fancy power. And I'm not going to go too much of the tech, tech side, but um, I think that's like a good starting point. And a lot of the projects that um, I started doing from home that paid me, I did off of a Blue Yeti microphone. People are like, oh, Blue Yeti like, aren't that great. I'm like, well, if you're just starting out or don't have a lot of money and, you, you know, you proof your room right and you know how to do some basic audio editing, it's going to sound fine. Like, I did some commercials off of it. I did, um, I recorded for a bunch of Heroes of Mirror characters off of it. Um, is anybody familiar with Dust and Illusion Channel? Um, I recorded Ginger off of my Blue Yeti microphone in a little foam box I made. <laughs> um, I recorded Belly from Honey Pop off of a Blue Yeti. Yeah, so, I mean, you can, you can work some magic with it. Um, yeah, so that's a great question. Um, I recommend that it's like a pretty good entry point for, for microphone and you can like play around with that. Like, you don't mind like, spending like a, a little bit. And then if you're like, yes, I am like doing really well with, with this Yeti and like my, uh, my space is proof properly. What I mean that is like you've like treated it like acoustically, whether that be like a closet that you like line with foam and all that kind of good stuff where you can create like a little porta booth. Um, because your microphone quality, you can have the best mic in the world, but if you stick it in this room with no like acoustic treat treatment for voiceover, is not going to help you because you're going to have sound bouncing up all over the place. So just have to keep in mind. Um, oh, there's so many questions! Yay! You guys are waiting. Yes, you have a question. Uh, uh, what program accommodation program would you recommend for audio recording? Okay, so um, for just, just to make sure I read right on, what program would I recommend for audio recording and editing? What program recommendation? Program recommendation for answer. So if you're just starting out and you don't maybe have a good budget, Audacity is free. Um, I used Audacity for years when I was starting out. Um, I mixed radio plays in Audacity, which is really not easy to do, but it's, it's doable. Um, after Audacity, I moved to Adobe Audition. Um, I personally like the older version, like 1.5 was my favorite, but you can't do like video editing in it, so I eventually had to upgrade to Pro Tools. But you don't need Pro Tools unless you're doing this full time professionally. Um, but yeah, so Audacity is great, um, Adobe Audition is great, you can use plugins that you can buy off of, um, I think like, there's a, there's a bunch of places like Waves, I think it has a, some great plugins, and then there's some great plugins for Pro Tools I recommend to you, like um, the NS1 is great for noise reduction. Um, but yeah, so there's like, don't, you don't need to spend money right away, like, or at least a lot of money. <laughs> but, um, yes, you right there.
Okay, awesome. That, those are a bunch of great questions. So I'll kind of tackle those um, one at a time. Um, firstly, um, I think the biggest difference between doing online voiceover and doing voiceover in person, um, like at a studio, is that for online voiceover, you don't always have somebody to direct you. A lot of the times, you you receive a script and you're recording on your own, and usually you get the script like ahead of time, um, or you have like a, you, you might have like a director Skype in, but you don't have them physically there in front of you. So um, that could be good or bad. Like some people prefer self-direction. Um, some people prefer to not have somebody staring at them while they're in the booth. Um, so it's just kind of like a comfort level thing. Um, I would say like, I for the longest time, I was really afraid of live direction because I started online. I started, you know, having like, uh, I still struggle with social anxiety. But when I was younger, it was really, 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 really bad. <laughs> it was really bad. Um, so I was like, oh no, like, I don't want somebody to hear me acting like my mom, that's fine. She's heard me say a bunch of crazy stuff, that's fine. She knows. <laughs> she knows not to call the cops. Um, but, yeah, so it's kind of like a comfort thing, and then also, like, the process is different. Um, a lot of times when you're doing online voiceover, you have to do your own audio editing after. If you're in a studio, you can just record and leave, and it's great. Like, you're like, I don't have to mess with any of that. I don't have to edit this. It's fantastic. Um, and then also, like, if you, like, the energy is a bit different. Having somebody direct you live and work with you live, there's a different kind of give and take and energy, and it can really help your performance, and you can feed off that energy, and you get faster, like, especially if you're not being, like, live directed, like, online, you get faster notes, you can make quicker adjustments, so the process is just faster. So, um, it is different, but um, I think both are really beneficial, because especially if you start out online, Kids are really good at self-directing, which is great when you're auditioning because you don't always have a direct, you can't always go in somewhere live to audition and you have to trust your instincts at home and maybe like a very trusted friend. <laughs> so um, that's kind of what I've noticed in terms of like the difference. And um, your, your other question was um, like finding, finding, finding the jobs. So um, there, we live in a wonderful age of the internet, so there's all kinds of great resources out there. Um, I know um, the voice acting club is run by Kira Buckland. Um, she's a fantastic actress, and there's a bunch of like auditions that are posted on there. Um, there's a, oh, I'm trying to think. I, I, I've noticed in, in recent months that Twitter has been like a hub of people retweeting auditions and stuff. So if there's like an online actor community, you know, like following people in that community and seeing those retweets and acting on them. And like one of um, one of my really good um, friends just um, who was an actor stopped acting and got back into it and he's been using Twitter a lot and he's been doing great. So um, there's that. There's also um, some free pay pay to play sites, which is basically where you pay for a membership and it gives you access to auditions. I do not recommend doing that until you have like a, like a decent home setup and you've been like acting for like a little bit because I don't want anybody to ever waste their money. Um, there's places like Voices.com, Voices123, there's a new place called Voiceovers.com. They all have like voice in there, so it's a little bit confusing, but they're all different. Um, and you do also have to be careful like using those sites because you don't want to like be under underpaid. But um, they, those are options. Um, I recently took a workshop with um, Andrea Toyas, um, who's a casting director for Blizzard, and she recommended Fiverr.com, um, which I have also used when I was starting in Ohio. There's a lot of misconceptions about Fiverr. Um, you're like, oh, well, you're doing ways over for only five dollars. That's not true. You can set your own prices, so you could put it up to industry standard, and then you know you're not like undercutting anything. But at the same time, like um, if you're just starting out, like and maybe your quality isn't so good, like keep that in mind when you're putting your prices. That way, you can still get practice and you can get paid for it. Um, so those are some options to start with. Um, is anybody interested in audiobooks? Because yeah, perfect. Um, do you guys know about ACX.com? Um, it is a free resource, it's a free website that is run by Amazon and the people from Audible, and there are um, audiobook auditions that are posted on there, and you can audition for free, free, and they pay you. You can either get paid in royalty share, or you can get paid for finished hour rate. So look into that, because there's all kinds of great options, and um, I recommend joining if like, you're big on social media. There's like some Facebook community, like online voiceover community groups, and people like are really great and like, share stuff, and you can always ask questions there, too. <laughs> Awesome, yeah, of course. I'm um, just you in the back. Oh, please come up. I, I, I don't know. Too far, too far. <laughs> Mic work? The mic should work. Okay. okay. Uh, when you're getting a script, 
Do they tell you like the situation that your character is going through so you know what emotions to exploit? Um, so regarding scripts just like for projects in general, so with online work specifically, you never know if you're going to get a script that tells you what's going on. Um, and half the time for like online auditions, there's not a lot of context. It's just like, female, middle-aged. <laughs> that could be anything, you know? <laughs> um, so I, I recommend like, one of, one of my hot, hot tips, the secret tricks that I use is like, even if um, what like the, the context is that even if it's not like correct what you're guessing when you're auditioning when you're recording, um, as long as you are feeling something and you are doing your own interpretation of that scene, like the acting is the most important. Like with auditions, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you don't have to be like, oh man, I guessed exactly right that this middle-aged woman is a doctor and this specific scene takes place on a boat after her husband died. No, like uh, as long as you're just like in your mind you create a scene and it, the acting is what's important, not guessing correctly. But um, scripts, are, scripts are different. Um, is there a specific media that you're, you're curious about in particular with um, getting context for scenes? If not, I'm just going to do no. over overarching thing. Yeah. So, um, do you are like are you talking about like after you've been cast or maybe if someone like you like Fiverr.com or something, someone just sent you or you got hired to be this character okay. for a bit. Well, with online work, um, in, in person, you can ask questions. Be like, hey, what's happening in this scene? You know, and um, they'll either tell you or they'll just be like, I don't know either, you know? <laughs> um, and they'll just have to go from there. Um, with most with most work um, online, you usually get the scripts in advance, so you have time to ask those kind of questions. Um, with a lot of work that you're doing in person at studios, you don't get to see the script ahead of time. You just go in and then you do it, like especially with anime. But um, usually you have a director there and you can ask questions, be like, hey, what's happening in this scene? And if you have a good director, they'll already explain that to you before you, you start recording. But um, that's why one of my um, other tips in general is for, for voiceover in particular is to get really good at cold reading because you're not going to have a lot of time to, you know, like with theater, you can just like, spend however long, long you want, like looking through a, like, a script and like, rehearsing and everything. For voiceover, your instincts have to be quick. You have to be able to sight read really, really well. Um, yeah, does, does that help yeah. a little bit? I don't. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, and I miss you over here. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering, would a, starting out with like an abridged series, would that be a good way to practice online voice acting, or that just kind of screw you over down the road? Okay, um, so there's like a lot of like um, misconceptions with like the bridge work in general. Um, I don't necessarily think it like will, will screw you over anything. There's a lot of people who have like done the bridge work, myself included, for those of you who don't know, I voice Android 18 for um, Team Four Star. Um, nice. <laughs> Yeah, and um, you know, um, Justin Reiner has also done like some bridge work, um, Christopher Guerrero and whatnot. Um, I don't necessarily think that there's anything wrong with the bridge work because it's like still you know practice and you know you're acting and whatnot. And I know like, Jessica Favela has like done a bridge work and whatnot. So um, it's a little bit complicated, but I don't necessarily think that you're going to get like blacklisted or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, of course. Yeah, you can come on up, feel free. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just wondering how do you prepare to get into character when you're voicing a specific one? Like um just just in general, like just in general. You, okay, sweet. So um everybody everybody is different and there's no right or wrong answer. Um for me, like I well, it, it's complicated. Like the more the more you do, the faster you get at it. But um, everybody's acting styles are different. So for me, I just like to kind of like, this is, this is really kind of like silly, like visualization, but like a picture, like a little like screw right here on my chest. And like I'll unscrew it to kind of like open myself up to just whatever I'm experiencing. That's like really like trippy, like hippy dippy, but whatever. I think, I think maybe like you get it's just like a little, like a little exercise yeah. just for me, like, okay, I'm here and I'm just like open to living in the, in the moment. It's like really opening myself up because acting is all about vulnerability. Um, you usually are like, acting out the scenes of these characters who are going through a crazy journey and um, maybe with character work and you're just like, okay, well, what am I in that mindset? Okay, so this character is like, 
you know, like maybe their, their boyfriend just died or something. And like, how do I get there emotionally? And everybody's different. And for me personally, I draw on a lot of personal experiences. I've never had a boyfriend die, but you know, like something that happened to me that like caused a lot of pain and like taking that and just like bringing that up to the surface and channeling that into that specific scene. Um, and it's, it's d different for everybody. I know uh, some, some of my, um, my other acting friends, like my one friend, he is very technical, so it's not about like feeling like the emotion, like channeling that. It's very technical, like this is how you say this line for it to, you know, portray this. So everybody works kind of differently. Um, and this is like my process. I like to um, kind of like do some deep breathing exercises before I go in, and you know, everybody still gets nervous. Like I still get nervous. I'm still like, woo, woo, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, is there like um, any other question in regard to that? No. Um, and just jumping off of that really quick, like one of um, along with like cold drinking, like one of the most important things. I mentioned this in my uh, panel yesterday. Building the well, um, I think one of the best things you can do for yourself is to go out and live life, because then you have these personal experiences to draw from for your acting. Um, I'm not saying that you have to go murder anybody or have people get killed, but like, just go like go travel, go like talk to like, different people, and, like experience different things, and you can draw on that. Um, yes, I saw hands. That's all I'm saying. Yes, 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 you. <laughs> so as far as things go, what should you avoid in the industry? Like something that you can blacklist or maybe an out and out scam, what is a good sign of that? Oh, this is an excellent question. So I'm gonna break it down in two parts. Um, I think um, just some general things to keep in mind is um, like etiquette, especially if you're transitioning from like online work into like studio work in person. Um, but very basic at the end is still, still business, it's still jobs, so, you know, always be like polite, professional. Um, don't don't be egotistical. Like I said, I mentioned yesterday in my other um, my other panel, like just like be a person, like be a human being. We're all we're all human beings on this planet. Just monkeys and shoes, you know. <laughs> so um, I think it's really important to like stay humble, stay grounded. Um, don't like one one of the like transitioning into a studio environment where you have engineers and like you know directors and other other staff like don't only treat the director very well or be very like smarmy towards them and like treat the engineer awful because um, engineers are so 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 important like because without them we wouldn't sound good and you know the process wouldn't go as smoothly as it does so just treating everybody kindly. Um, being respectful to the engineers. So I guarantee you, if you walk into a studio like after like booking a job and you are an asshole to the engineer, but you're like really nice to everybody else, even if you're phenomenal in the booth, they're gonna remember that you're a jerk to that engineer. So stuff to keep in mind. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think what else. There's, there's a an etiquette thing to be a whole other <laughs> whole other panel in itself. But yeah, just be like, be like a, a kind, grounded human being. Um, and just, you know, everybody, like, other actors aren't your competition, because everybody is different, everybody has a different vocal type, everybody has a different life, and that affects their acting. Um, you guys are all, like, you know, working together to, like, kind of, like, lifting each other up. Not just be like, oh, my goodness, this person's booking more than me, or, you know, that kind of negativity, which, um, with, with an, like, creative fields, that kind of stuff can't be bred, and, you know, it, it sucks. Um, and then your other question. What was the other question that fell out of my brain? What should you avoid in order to not have, say, a scam go against you yeah. or anything like that? Okay, like, do you mean, like, um, like... Someone tricking you out of your time or even stealing oh. your work. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So, um, with this, like, um, this, for, for the online community, um, one really important thing is, like, try not to ever record, like, a full script for an audition. Like, this is mainly if you're using, like, a pay-to-play site and you're auditioning for a commercial, and the full script is posted there. Don't record the whole thing, or, like, intentionally fumble some of the words that way you can't just take your audition and, like, put it in the final and not pay you. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Uh, so be careful about that. Um, and be careful with, like, email, email scams. Like, there was this one going on, I think, like, a couple years ago, where this person would, like, message people be like, hey, I want to book you for this thing, you need to go to the studio here, and it, like, your location won't pay for it, and then I'm mailing this check or whatever. It was like a, a scam to basically have you, like, like pay a student, they weren't really paying a student, there was no studio recession, it was like one of those, like, like you, you know what I'm talking about, those complicated, yeah, so just be careful about email, just be like, hey, like, 
um, no, if we're like really weird, we like twist your gut. Or you can ask people in like those voiceover like online communities, because that that's where I read about that scam in particular with so many posts of it. Um, and I think the biggest thing um, that people tend to get scammed with, especially like in voiceover, is with their demos. So be very, very careful with uh, demos and classes. Be careful who you're paying um, to take classes from, and be careful who you're paying to have a demo made by. Uh, you know, you should only really be willing to pay somebody to take classes if they're like really, really in the industry, if they've been doing this for forever, if they're like a great actor, like a Richard Corbett, for example. Like that's that, that's the kind of level I'm talking about. And um, and with your demo, like always make sure that like kind of kind of like the same thing, like, they know what they're doing. And they're, you know, specializing in the style that you're looking for because there's so many different areas of voiceover. You know, there's like animation, there's games, there's commercials, there's audiobooks, there's industrial, there's automotive, there's so much work out there. And if, like you wouldn't get like a commercial demo done by somebody who only does audiobooks, you know? So um, just do your research, be careful, be safe, this is the thing. <laughs> and um, always like, you know, you can always check with other people who are like in the same you know, boat as you are and be like, yeah, like who would you recommend? What was your experience with this? And um, anybody who just like, wants to take money from you up front, that's probably, be careful with that too. <laughs> yeah, I hope that helps. Do you have any other questions on that aspect? Nope, that's all. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Yay, you guys are so interactive today. Yes, it's the, the, the yes, the eagles. So um, doing something like that online and then doing something like that in person is a little bit different. Um, if you're doing it online, then um, you're, you probably have, you have saved the audio files on your end and you can like listen to those and reference them. If you don't have them, your client might say, like, hey, can you send me a local reference? Um, and I recommend always doing that before you're continuing your character. That way you do stay in choice because you don't want to have to review everything. Um, if you go into a the studio, they'll already have that ready for you. You're like, hey, here's what we did last time just to kind of get you back into the field. But um, very valid stressful because I know like when I started like, doing studio work, I was like, oh my gosh, what if I don't remember exactly what I did when you know last time I came in? But now it's totally okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, any any other questions? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> come on up. And it was like a long walk out. <laughs> just like, just, like Sorry. runway. Um, what kind of tips or advice would you give to like beginner or amateur like voice actors? That's a great question. Um, so for beginners, especially, um, practice for full reading every day. I believe it was Jennifer Hale who said 10 minutes, five minutes nonfiction, five minutes fiction. And that just like gets your like mouth used to all kinds of words and you know, just like practicing that cold reading. Um, I'm not great with pronunciation to like this day. Um, so what I like to do is if I read something and I don't know how to pronounce it, I have a little spreadsheet document. So I'll like write the word in there, write the definition and like, have the correct pronunciation there and I'll like quiz myself like at the end of the month that way you know you're expanding your vocabulary and that way the pronunciation like doesn't like trip you out in like a session which is not a big deal if it doesn't if it does trip you out when you're in a session but it's just good to be like yes I can pronounce the thing <laughs> um yeah aside from that just like practice all the time like with anything and just put it all like put a bunch of time into it just like doing it over and over again and um, don't be like too hard on yourself. It's been, don't compare yourself to others who may have started like way before you or you know so on and so forth. Because everybody's journey is different. You don't know how long they've spent or like what you know their journey has been. Um, so yeah, just like lots of practice, full reading, living life, um, and creating a supportive community of friends around you who like support you and like lift you up, you all lift each other up. I think it's really important. Um, yeah, and like, with, like again, like rejection is so common, and let's just know that like everybody is auditioning their butts off and only booking one in forty, one in forty jobs. So if you're booking more than that, that's great. You have a really high booking rate, and if not, like don't be so hard on yourself either because it'll it'll come back. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. I love your costume, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yes. How um, dialects. Um, so. I'm not great with accents. It takes me a really, really long time. So I just practicing them. Um, I think 
what's really in season, well, in season for like games, is like very neutral British uh, RP accent, especially for elves and whatnot. So working on stuff that's like in season ahead of time is great that we have some opportunities. And there's also like local coaches. I think um, Chuck Huber teaches um, online um, accent um, classes, so that's something we'll look into. And if you're just like, oh, it's one thing, then definitely accent. <laughs> Um, so I personally sing very badly because I'm not a singer. Um, so I'll warm up that way, and then I will also do tongue twisters. So I had this long document of tongue twisters that I have to read until I memorize that. And like tongue twisters just like kind of like gets your, your your mouth warmed up, and then I just kind of like shake my cheeks out like really weird. I won't do it right now because it's not attractive. But it's, little, 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 it's not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like anything that kind of like warms up, like do some bolt reading, and if I know like I'm doing a high character, I'll, you know, warm up my high range, or vice versa with the lower, just kind of, you know, or if I don't know what I'm doing, just like warming up the whole spectrum. So, um, I recommend like drinking water, like consistently, because even if you wake up hours before a session and start like chugging water, it doesn't really get into your system. Um, right away, it won't help with like mouth noise and the hydration. So just drinking lots of water all the time. Like, yes, like get yourself like a, a giant thing of water and just always drink it. <laughs> You're so welcome. Yes. Uh, so you mentioned earlier that you uh, worked with uh, Team Four Star as the voice of the team. How, how, how was uh, working with the team as a whole? Oh, they were really fun. Like, um, they're super nice and chill. Um, Spot usually directs me when I'm um, voicing on the team. When I did uh, the Schrodinger and Helsing Bridge, um, it was Curtis who was directing me. But um, yeah, they're also just really busy. So um, they're also in the Dallas area, except for Curtis and Moscow. But um, so, and, and Anthony. But um, yeah, so we see each other every now and then. But like, everyone's really busy, but they're really fun. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I was going to ask, if you have any like disappointments or if you on the line or have a bad audition, how do you pick yourself back up after that? How do you kind of reset from there? That's a good question. Um, that's like, this is a multi-part question, but it's really good. So um, I guess like, project, like knowing rejection is constant and, you know, being confident in yourself is like, hey, you know, like I, I am enough uh, and everybody like brings something special to the table and just be like, hey, like, you know, that might have been their 140, my 140 is coming. Um, as far as like messing up in sessions, like that happens a lot. It happens a lot. So just like just it's just it just happens. Sometimes you have like a really good day where you're just nailing everything. Sometimes you don't. But um, directors are really chill, and you know at the end of the day they hired you for a reason, and they're not going to stop working with you because you fucked a lot of messed up. Um, and especially if you just like make it funny or you don't take it so seriously. Like for me, if I just mess up, I'll just like laugh or I'll just like keep going. You know. Um, just some, something I've noticed some people, especially when they're new, they're just like, oh man, it sucked, or like under the breath or whatever. Don't do that, don't like self-deprecate yourself, you know? <laughs> you don't need to do that. Um, yeah, does that, does that help a little bit? So, it's kind of like, like, even like a bad day at work, you know, is there anything that you do after that? Like, do you have a plan for that? Or do you say that would be the right idea? I'm so sorry, can you come up to the microphone? I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm like, <laughs> I hear you isn't great. <laughs> I'm just kind of saying if there is a bad experience, is there anything in particular do to reset from there? Like, you know, I find like if I have a bad day at work, I go home and I watch like an anime or something like that. Right. You know, is there something like that that you kind of recommend? Um yeah, I mean everybody's different, so it's really what you enjoy. I mean personally, I love being outside, I love being active, so I'll go hiking or I'll go do some yoga or I'll go to the gym. Um, I was binging, like, I'll, I'll be binging with drums, <laughs> you know? Um, just, like, finding whatever, like, makes you happy and, like, lifts you up. And also allowing yourself a little bit of time to feel whatever it is you're feeling. Because I think, as a culture, we're so, you know, used to having to suppress things. And that just creates, like, a knot, in, especially in your acting, because you need to be open. So just letting yourself feel, like, you know, whatever it is. And be like, hey, like, it's not the end of the world, and, like, de-escalating the situation.
such a normal people. Um, okay, so I do a lot of uh, like freelance work online. That's generally where I've gone. How do you make that transition from online to in studio? And I apologize if you already answered that. No, that's okay. So um, it really depends on, right. on like what um, you know. I'm asking, what state do you live in? I live in uh, Georgia right now, but I moved okay. to uh, Wisconsin here. Okay, okay. Well, um, if you're in Georgia, I know like um, Atlanta has a pretty big video scene. Um, but making like the, the transition, like I still do online work. I still do freelance online work. So I just I just do everything. So like um, I move to a location that has a lot of studio work. Um, and since you've already been freelancing, I take it you already have like a resume going. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Within so, there and the mic setup as well. So I mean that's right. kind of okay. Yeah, exactly. So I think um, for you, like um, I think it's important to keep hustling online work and sure. then um, look for an agent. You know, getting an agent's that next step. Like, if you don't have um, demos yet, getting demos produced professionally without being like scammed, and that's something I went over earlier. Um, and then, you know, getting an agent, because your agent can get you other opportunities. And fun fact, you can have more than one agent. You can have agents in different states. Um, for instance, one of my friends, she has an agent in Dallas, she has an agent in LA, she has an agent in New York, or she has an agent in like Kentucky or something. So, I mean, you're allowed, um, there's a, each state has like, a different regulation for how many agents you're allowed. So, you know, LA is a little bit more complicated because they usually want you to live there, to have an agent there, and I think Texas is the same. But um, if, like moving to an area that has a lot of work is kind of the next step. Um, yeah. Well, we're both, by the way. Great. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, any other questions? You guys have been great. This is fantastic. Um, yeah. Uh, so, with the character of. Oh, I'm so sorry. I think if you come to the mic, I'm so sorry. So, with the character of Mozomi uh, Kamiyashi from yes. Keijo, how did you approach the character initially? I love her. So, I'm going to tell this is story time, guys. Okay, so before um, I knew Keijo was getting dead, I saw the trailer, like the Japanese trailer, come out, which is like being, you know, like spread everywhere because it's a bunch of girls fighting with their boots and butts, and that is the kind of thing that gets spread around. And I'm like, this is amazing. They are having like an intense battle. This is great. So, <laughs> Um, I was, um, I had, like, Lindosi was my first lead at Funimation, so I was in at the time for, um, I was recording from Peace Bowl, I was voice in Baccarat, and I was, like, in the booth, and then, um, Clifford Chapin, who directed, uh, K. Joe, came in during my session, he was like, hey, Amber, are you free next season? I'm like, yeah, I'm free, and he's like, are you okay with, like, like, Etchy, like, are you okay with that? I'm like, yes, of course I'm okay with Etchy, this is fine. Not everybody is, and that's totally okay, but I am, so I'm like, yes. And he was like, do you know the show called K. Joe? And I kid you not, I was like, Ooh. I gasped. And I was like, oh no, you must control, you must control yourself. You must not know that you know what this is and that you were like kind of a fan already. So, <laughs> um, so I just kind of was like, oh, uh, yeah, like, you know, like it, maybe. Um, but he's like, okay, cool. He's like, that's the show I have next season. And like, that was it. I was already excited. I was like, oh my God, I'm really, like, I hope I get to work on this show because like, it's so freaking hilarious and I, I love it. So, um, I got sent on the cliff and to come in. I didn't know who I was voicing. I didn't audition for it. I didn't know who I was voicing. I didn't know anything. I just came in. I was sitting in the lobby. And I only had an hour session. Which, if you're voicing like a lead, usually you'll have a lot more hours than that. So I'm like, oh, maybe like I'm like a bit or like a side character. Um, so I'm sitting in the lobby, and he comes out and he's like, hey, so has anybody told you who you're voicing at? And I'm like, no. And he's like, knows me. And I just blank stared at him because I didn't know her name. I was like, it's like the, the main character. I was like, oh. So, um, oh, it was really fun and exciting, and I put like a lot of myself into that character because she, you know, she never gives up. She's really determined. She's all about her goals, and she's also poor. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was a lot of fun. And um, for those of you who haven't seen Keijo, it is very self-aware. It's very humorous. There's a bunch of different female you know, characters, different body types, and they don't shame each other. It's great. They all have different like skill sets or assets. It's great. Highly recommend. <laughs> Question. 
Um, you know, like, depending on like what your audio quality is, like what your personal situation is, like I don't think you should ever like be severely undercut, but there's a great resource um, that you can like look up online that has like each year's like professional rate sheets. You can look up those and then you can be like, okay, well this is what like, you know, like industry professionals are, are charging or getting charged, um, you know, for. And um, you can base your rates off of like your skill level, like where you're at, and then also like that sheet, that way you're not like getting like taken advantage of. Because like everybody's different like starting out, so I don't really know like, um, so kind of trust your gut. And um, you can also like, if you have like an online community that's very supportive, you can ask people, be like, hey, like what do you charge for this? And nobody's be like, oh no, it's a secret, we're not going to tell you, they'll let you, they'll let you know. Um, and then if you're auditioning for work, um, for paying work, they'll have breaks there. They'll tell you how much they're going to be paying for something. So that way you can, you already kind of know like what you'll be getting if you book it. Um, and then if you use sites like Lisa.com, like no job is going to pay under $100 on there. So um, yeah, I, I would recommend like researching it. Um, I'm going to see if I can find the exact website that has a rate sheet for you. Um, what is, oh, my rate is 2019. Because um, it is different depending on like if you're doing audio books, if you're doing like commercials, like, it's different for genre and then also just kind of like going from there. Yeah, and it's, uh, I think the Global Voice Acting Academy is the place that has the, the rate sheets. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no great questions. Cool, so we have about nine minutes left. Oh, yes, you're in the back of the ears. Yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's like, we need like music for every time like, somebody's like running up because it's like, <laughs> Into your voice, do you have things like your whole body to express it? I highly recommend using your whole body to express it. So there's like a lot of misconceptions. There's like, oh, you just have to stand perfectly still, and no, my hands like going all over the place. Or I'm just like, yes, this is my concentration hand motion. And everybody's different. Um, I, because um, I'm also like a director. Like I've had, I've worked with um, J. Michael Kim a few times um, for some video game work, and he is very physically expressive. Um, so everybody's different. Uh, as long as you're not like banging your feet and like making like a lot of noise, wearing like dangling jewelry, you can move around. Um, that's something that's been interesting. Like uh, from a lot of uh, people who I've worked with that have been like maybe theater based, who are transitioning into voiceover, they will stop their feet and everything, and the, the emotions break. I'm like, oh, we gotta get that again because I hear your boots, you know. <laughs> um, but well, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, it depends on the project because sometimes video games are a lot more lenient with like improv. 
but like if you're doing like anime and not doing like flops, you won't have a lot of room to do that. And you shouldn't unless they ask you for it. All right. Yeah, that's a good question. Awesome. So we have about five minutes left. Lightning round questions. Anybody? <laughs> yeah. before I moved and I love my instructor and I've been trying to find a new instructor. But um, um, Amanda Lee is like one of my closest friends and she's a fantastic singer and actor and like I cannot tell you how many times like singing roles have popped up in like anime or video games and I've had to miss out because I can't sing well. So um, yeah, just train your voice in general is great. Yes. Um, do you mean like creature animals or like, you know, like Combat Foley, Rust, like all of the above. Yeah, like the more you can do, the better. My one friend, I'm Chris Lenti, she's very, very good at doing cats. <laughs> she's very good at doing cats. Like people cast with all these cats, and like these shows, and how the weather work. Um, you're really good at creatures, and having a specific demo for creatures is really good because um, it's really, really important in video games. Um, and then being able to, you know, like do like gas, breath, like fight combat, and everything is really important just all around in like animation, video games. Um, even like audio books, depending on like how the style is. So yeah, definitely practice like everything. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see. So we have four minutes. Any other specific questions? Yeah. Have you ever done a game for fight and not done like battle Um, no, every character I've ever done, I've done the battle fully for. Um, that's actually one of my, my one of my specialties on my resume is screaming. Um, I like I love I love doing combat foley. I love doing screaming. If anybody's picking up Borderlands 3, I used a female psycho in it, which I'm really excited about. So please check it out. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but um, everybody's everybody's different. Um, there are some you know some people I work with who um, like are great all around, but like maybe can't do like the combat foley. I recommend like if that's something that you do struggle with. To work work on it. Um, fun fact, like I struggle with my breathing a lot, um, especially like right when I was like, working on Keijo. So I took an Iido class and for a couple weeks to help with my breathing. So I mean, <laughs> um, taking like a martial art to help, um, you know, with your breath control is really good. I do yoga like five times a week now, and that's helped with my breathing, um, which allows me to get more oomph in my attacks and you know hold it my breath for like longer lines and everything. That's a good question. We'll go on that or you and me. Uh, do you have any uh, voice acting horror stories? Voice acting horror stories? There's a lot like in one regard. Like. Uh, like bad director. Bad director. Um, so the, like, the only time I've ever really experienced a bad director was when they weren't actually a director. They were like, I was working on um, this book trailer and it was Two, the two authors of this book who had never worked with an actor in their entire life. And um, the things about directors is they specialize in communicating with actors, and usually they're actors themselves, so they know how to talk to you. Um, the direction I was getting, it was like maybe like three lines, and it took me almost five hours, because they were just like, oh, give me a direction that was more like, oh, give me more table with like a side of orange. Like that's how just, Ridiculous. <laughs> it was. Yeah, they'd be like, okay, well, she's like young and wise, but she's mature, but no, she still sounds youthful. But then maybe like, like slower, like you're writing a letter. No, like you're thinking it. So it was just like over and over again. So I had to think fully how to work many like bad actual directors. Just sometimes you'll get like, some clients like that that are just, it's an experience. <laughs> past a minute and 30 seconds. Um, for like a lot of people I know do a combination of like visual demos of just like work that they've done. Like so if they like did a bunch of characters for season they'll have like a like a little visual demo of that. Usually same principles apply like I wouldn't have it go over a minute and 30 seconds. And then having audio demos. But since demos are your calling for like the more you have better quality, like the better like you'll be able to get opportunities or you'll be able to submit and you'll hear back. Okay. 